So in the last tutorial I showed you how to code a precise grappling ability with that you can pull yourself to any object. But sometimes you might want to swing under or around objects. So today I'm going to show you how you can implement normal swinging but also omnidirectional swinging which means that mid-air you can go left, right and shorten or extend your cable. I'll then also explain how you can combine this ability with the precise grappling ability from last video. And if enough people are interested, I'll even make a second part where I show you how to implement dual hooks, which means you're using two cables to swing and grapple around. Add that all together and you'll end up with amazing air control in your game that feels super satisfying to use once you get the hang of it. So yeah, let's get started. First of all, let's tackle the basic swinging ability. And I'm doing this in almost exactly the same way as Danny showed you in his tutorial, so if you already have his code, you can just use it as a base and skip ahead like a minute. For anyone else, I'll quickly explain it. It's not that complicated. Just create a start and stop swing function and then in void update you call start swing when you press the left mouse button down and stop swing when you release it again. And then for the actual swinging, you can just shoot out a raycast into the forward direction of the camera. For this, just pass in the camera's position, the direction, where you want to store the information, the max distance and the layer mask to check if this object is grappable. If this raycast hits something, we're just going to add a joint component to the player and attach it to the grapple point. And then let's customize the settings of this joint component a bit. And you can really play around with these until you find something that you like. And then in stop swing, you can just destroy the joint component again. And since there needs to be a way to visualize the joint, we're going to use a line renderer component. So set the positions of it to 2 when you start swinging and back to 0 when you stop swinging. Then add a new function called draw rope, call it in late update and then basically just set the positions of the line renderer. Except if you want to, you can also slowly move the grapple position towards the grapple point so the line isn't appearing instantly. Also, for the setup inside of Unity, the grappling gun is just inside of the camera object and then there's an empty game object for the gun tip inside of it. If you have that, just add a swinging script and a line renderer component to the player and then assign all of the variables. And if you now hit play, you can already swing around a bit. But if you're using my movement script, you'll notice that you're swinging very slowly because the max speed didn't change. So as always, create a new max speed, state and bool for swinging. And then add a new state to the state handler. Then in start swinging, set the swinging bool of the player movement script to true. And in stop swinging, set it to false again. If you now increase the swing max speed in the inspector, your velocity is no longer limited but the ground movement might still be active, so make sure to return the move player function while you're swinging. Ok, now let's get some air control into this ability. And of course it's important to keep this movement at least somewhat realistic, so what could you possibly do mid-air in order to control your flight path using a simple grappling hook? Well, absolutely nothing. You really have no control with just a rope in your hand. So let's just imagine the player has two jets attached to his belt and also a mechanical hook that can be shortened or extended. No clue where I got this idea from. Anyways, before I show you the entire series of Attack on Titan and get into copyright issues, let's have a look at how to implement that in code. So create a function for air movement and call it in void update if you're currently swinging, which means a joint is attached. Then let's add force to the left if you press A and force to the right if you press D. And if you want to, you can also give the player the option to add forward force with W. Then if you press space, let's add force in the direction of the grapple point and shorten the cable by recalculating the distance to the grapple point and editing the joint component. And last but not least, if you press S, let's extend the cable without adding any forces. For this, you just take the current distance to the grapple point, add a little bit on top of it and then recalculate the max distance of the joint. Back in Unity, you can set the values to something like this and hit play. 
And now that you're able to shorten and extend your cable, as well as add directional forces, you already have lots of air control. But if you want to add even more precision, the grappling ability from last time would of course be perfect. And as long as you're only using one cable to swing around, there's really not much you need to change in order to use both abilities simultaneously. Basically, you just need to make sure that when you start grappling, you call the stop swinging function, and when you start swinging, you call the stop grappling function. And also reset the restrictions of the player movement script. And if you now for example bind swinging to your left click and grappling to your right click, you can use both of them to get almost anywhere you want in a controlled way. Now one last thing I want to show you is how to implement proper aim prediction for both the swinging and grappling ability. How this is going to work is that we'll use sphere cast instead of ray cast. So when the player looks for example at this point, the sphere cast is still going to detect the object and place the hit point somewhere here. However, if the player directly aims at the object, we want to use a normal raycast again, because that's a lot more accurate. So go back to your swinging script and create a raycast hit variable to store the prediction hit, as well as a float to define the radius of the sphere cast. Also, let's have a transform for this red prediction point in order to visualize all of this. Then create a new function called check for swing points and continuously call it in void update. Now first of all, if you're currently swinging, just return the function, because then you don't need to check for new points. Okay, now let's perform the sphere cast and store the information in the sphere cast hit variable. And then let's also perform the ray cast and store the information in the ray cast hit variable. And as I've explained before, we now need to choose which one of the hit points to take. So if there is a raycast hit, take this one, else if there's not a raycast hit, but a sphere cast hit, then we'll use this one instead. And if both points aren't available, just set the real hit point to zero. Now if the real hit point was found, activate the prediction point and set its position to the hit point. Also if no hit point was found, make sure to deactivate the prediction point. Then you can store either the raycast hit or sphere cast hit in the prediction hit variable. And this is the one that we're now going to use in the start swing function. So remove the old raycast there and instead just quickly check if the prediction hit has not been found, because then you want to return the function. If it has been found, you can now use it as swing point and that's it. Now you can go back to Unity, create some kind of prediction point, assign all of the variables and hit play. And congrats, you just coded quite an advanced swinging ability with hit prediction and adding forces mid-air. I hope you managed to combine it with the grappling ability and if you want to, you can of course add aim prediction to the grappling script as well. If you need help with any of this, you can check out my discord server, there I'll upload this project file in the free code Dave channel and there's also a coding help channel if you need it. And if you're interested in dual swinging, make sure to let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a tutorial on it. Alternatively, you can also check out my Patreon. There you can get access to my full movement lab project file that contains all of the abilities I've shown so far and a lot more. As for air control, there's dual swinging, alternate grappling, double jumping and dashing. But now thank you so much for watching. If this tutorial has helped you in any way, make sure to like the video in return and subscribe for more awesome tutorials. See you next time.